Hello everyone, this is The Mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today as I take a deeper look into the most recent episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 8, Episode 8. I will not be doing a full episode recap as there are plenty of other content creators who do an excellent job covering the show. Instead, I'm going to focus on specific elements of the episode that I believe could be used as teachable moments for myself and the audience. Now, before I begin, I wanted to offer a word of advice to you guys who are listening, okay? If someone calls themselves your friend, but you find yourself involved in more drama ever since they came into your lives, then they're not really your friend. For the past several years, I've stated that some of the fans of this show are doing too much and their actions are going to backfire on Melody because she's going to end up being held accountable for what her fans are doing. I stated that Melody needs to make sure her brand identity is not associated with whatever issues her fans are projecting onto her. I also stated that some of her so-called fans are intentionally starting fires so that they can come to the rescue and prove to Melody how much more loyal they are to her than other people. Okay, you guys can listen to that here um, in this video. Now, my OG subscribers know that one of the reasons why I pulled away from discussing Love and Marriage Huntsville and getting involved in the social media antics is because I felt like my intuition was telling me that people were developing a bloodlust for the drama and the negativity to the point where they were amplifying the negativity for their own personal uh, enrichment. Okay. And the objective was not to help Melody or the audience to understand what was happening. The objective was to attack under the guise of support. I'm going to attack this individual or this content creator or this audience member under the guise of showing 100% support to Melody. And that became the objective, right? I am not your friend if I am making your life more complicated unless I'm helping to improve your life in some way, like helping you to leave an abusive relationship or helping you to lose weight at the gym, but as your friend, or at the very least, someone who really, really supports you, right? As your friend, I feel like it is my responsibility to make your life as uncomplicated and drama-free as possible. As I predicted over a year ago, Melody is now being blamed for what her stands are doing. And unfortunately, you know, if the tide does not turn, the situation is going to backfire. Melody has enough battles to face with Martel. And now she has to deal with the petty squabbles on social media because people are instigating mess on her behalf or for their own personal financial benefit, or people are instigating mess because they don't like Melody. It could be one of all three, could be one of the three, two of the three, all three of those possibilities. And I'm not speaking about any content creator in particular because I stopped watching other people's reviews of the show for a multitude of reasons that I've discussed in the past. But based on what I've read on the forums, on social media, and now what I'm hearing on the show, the fans have gotten out of hand to the point where now Melody is being accused of weaponizing her fan base against other cast members, which her enemies will then use to justify Martel's behavior against her. Okay. Now, a couple years ago, I posted a video. Uh, it could be private now. I, I privated a lot of my content because um, my intuition was telling me that some people were using my content in a way that I did not want it to be used. It's like somebody who comes up with a great invention and then, you know, other people see that invention and they want to use it for their own destructive objectives, which is against the nature of what was being created in the first place. I started my platform a couple of years ago to help people understand what Melody was going through as far as dealing with a narcissistic husband. And I feel like I accomplished that goal to the point where I don't feel the need to reiterate that point anymore than I already have, okay? So I pulled it back. Now, as I've stated a couple years ago, Melody's success should not be used as a weapon against the other cast members. These are all black people living in black communities who hire black employees, who have black children and black families to support. I don't believe in, you know, trying to destroy someone's business or their family to show support to somebody else. That is a bad business model. Why is it a bad business model? Because you're going to have to maintain the drama to fuel your success, which is what has been happening. 
the stands are creating drama in a way to garner more support from Melody. On an astrological tip, with the transition of Pluto into Aquarius, it's retrograde now, but it's going to go back into Aquarius by the end of the year. Melody, like many other Scorpios, like Diddy, and all the other fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius, are going through a very intense period of an ego death, okay? When Pluto makes a square aspect or conjunction or an opposition to your sun sign, you go through some sort of ego death or transformation that forces you to evaluate who you really are and what you really want out of life, okay? So over the next decade, Melody, as well as many other Scorpios, including myself, we're going to have to release everything that was built off of our ego. Like other fixed signs, Melody has to be careful not to associate with people who are feeding the dark side of the ego, which we all have. We all have a dark side or a shadow side to our ego. And that will be the competition, the jealousy, the pettiness, the revenge, anger, materialism, like boastfulness, all of these things are going to have to be adjusted while Pluto is making his transit. Melody is going to have to detach and rebrand because the very people who are supposedly writing for her, and not all of them, there are some genuine Melody fans out there and supporters. I'm a fan of Melody. I support Melody. I believe that Melody has a good head on her shoulders, has a lot of potential, and I really appreciate her opening herself up and her life up for other people to scrutinize and learn from her experiences. That is something that is hard for most people to do, and so I always have respect for her and appreciate her for doing that. However, I'm not a stan. I don't do the stan war things, right? I don't do the, the clout chasing, the cult high mind mentality. That's not the way I'm oriented. Even if I wanted to be that person, I cannot do that. I don't do the cult of personality worship thing. That's not my thing. Doesn't mean that I don't support Melody. It just means that we have to be, I feel like we have to be more tempered when it comes to showing our support to the people that we care about in our lives, okay? So at some point during the next 20 years, on multiple occasions, this is for all fixed signs, especially Melody because she has a stellium in Scorpio, okay? With Pluto and Saturn in Scorpio, with Venus. This is going to be a very intense period for her. And she's going to have to let go of certain things in order to heal and move forward in her life. Now, on multiple occasions, I have stated that my support for Melody is not predicated upon her being perfect at all. But the stands are creating a tight rope for Melody to walk. If she makes the slightest mistake or miscalculation, this will be used against her with a lot of anger and fervor and the same energy that's being used against the other cast members. And I'll discuss this some point um, in the future. Now onto the show. This episode, Sunny had a confrontation with Destiny at Stormy's Galentine's party. Apparently, Sunny married Moses after three months of dating, which to me indicates that at best, Sunny was in communication with Moses on a personal level before they even started dating, okay? Um, Sunny has a very defensive and stink attitude, which I do understand because you don't want strangers all in your business judging you about your personal choices. But I also believe she's defensive because a small part of her knows that what she did was disrespectful to Destiny. And so she's overcompensating by being on the attack all the time as if someone did something to her. Nell interrogated uh, Sunny about the triangulation between her, Destiny, and Moses. And basically, Sunny reiterated that, um, you know, Destiny was a side piece, according to Moses. Now, Moses may have downplayed his relationship or situationship to justify dating Sunny. He could have lied to Sunny about his relationship with Destiny and why they were dating in the first place. Even if this scenario is fake between all three of them, because I'm hearing people say, I'm reading people say that, you know, this was a setup for a storyline for Destiny. Even if this scenario is fake, it is a good storyline because a lot of women are going through this, fighting with other women over a man who did not respect them enough to establish clear boundaries uh, for the relationship in the first place. You know, women in general get a bad rap for being messy, quote unquote. But the messiest situations that I see women get involved in usually deal with other men, deal with men. And a lot of men enjoy having women compete for their attention because they were neglected by their mothers. What I find odd is that Destiny got choked up over Moses while she was talking to Miss Nell, but she was very stoic when discussing her divorce from her ex-husband, LeBeric, who on paper, in my opinion, is a way better catch than Moses. 
and in my mind I'm like was there some sort of overlap between Destiny's relationship with Moses and LeBerg because everyone in this situation moves on to the next so quickly it's hard to tell what is really going on with these musical chair relationships it's like everybody is using somebody to get over someone else instead of being single and dealing with their own issues so was Destiny more attracted to Moses or the Beric? Because she did know Moses before she met the Beric. And, you know, I always thought the Beric was an unsung hero on the show. He was handsome, successful, hardworking, a, you know, a good father, an entrepreneur. He wasn't just putting on airs for the show. He was like an unsung hero, hero of Star the show. I really wish he was on the show more to give these men an example of what a good man looks like on paper. I'm not saying he's perfect, but I still think he was a good catch for Destiny or any other woman who he would be involved with based on the way he's carried himself even after the divorce um, with Destiny. Not saying he's perfect, but still. You know, the bar is low when it comes to men in our community. So I could be giving uh, LeBaric more credit than he deserves, but from what I'm seeing, or what I've seen of him, he seems like a really good guy a good catch. Okay, so. Destiny did say that Moses married Sunny to hurt Destiny, which is not outside of the realm of possibility after a three-month courtship. Meanwhile, three years after his divorce, Martel still has not committed to Arion, even as a boyfriend who has his youngest child. So if Moses married Sunny to hurt Destiny, was he ever really her friend? I mean, you know, um, Moses doing something like that would imply that uh, he felt some kind of way about their breakup in the first place, which means that it wasn't necessarily mutual. Um, and Destiny said she initiated the breakup because he did not show up the way that he needed her to. So if she initiated the breakup, should she feel some kind of way about who he decides to date afterwards? They have no kids together and they were never, never married. And Sunny was not really her close friend like that. It is messy, but is it really her business, right? And there's nothing worse than a petty ass man. We saw this with Martel. So Moses is appearing to be petty, vindictive, and a womanizer. But Sunny feels the need to rub it in that she's his wife now and she won. She got the man. And this is why I keep telling y'all. Oh my God, I'm getting choked up my like coughing. Okay. I keep telling y'all that these men don't have to bring anything to the table but penis, nice teeth, and muscles. They will win as long as we live in a superficial culture where physical appearance supersedes substance, character, work ethic, loyalty, and integrity. Moses is handsome, but he's nothing to be crying over. So hopefully Destiny has removed any lingering romantic feelings she has for him. I know she said she missed him as a friend. Okay, you know, now with that said, uh, Sunny's chemistry with Moses is a little awkward. They don't act like newlyweds. He's not really touchy-feely or affectionate over her or about her. I don't know if it's the cameras or him being nervous or the drama or I don't know what's going on. But Moses is not really affectionate or doting towards Sunny at all. He didn't even wear his red wedding ring to meet up with Destiny, which to me means that he's not ready to settle down at this point. And he could have gotten married to uh, Sunny to hurt destiny which is kind of like a love bombing narcissistic thing to do um he probably did that he could have done that to hurt her or he's not really ready to commit you know to be honest i feel like even now martell and melody in the same room have more chemistry than sunny and moses and martell and melody have been married for over a decade had gone through a lot of stuff but when you see them on camera together the affection and love and attraction not affection i would say the attraction was there it was quite evident and it's not a coincidence that destiny and sunny look like sisters and they look like cousins at the very least so moses has a type um you know even with a uh, stormy and her husband courtney they're affectionate toward each other you can tell they actually like each other but moses is kind of awkward like somebody who doesn't want to give too much attention or affection to one woman to make sure other women who he may want an opportunity with don't get jealous or in case like he's dating somebody on the side and he doesn't want them to see them being affected towards somebody else. It's like that kind of behavior, like is cold and detached, like very guarded. I don't know if it could be nervousness, I don't know, but hopefully it's not that, but he's acting like somebody who's not really committed to his relationship. 
And not to be negative, but I don't really see this marriage between Moses and Sonny lasting for too long, um, to be honest. So, oh, one more thing about the Destiny and Sonny uh, conversation. I think Destiny carried herself really, really well. And last week, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I stated that I love her swagger. Um, she's not like the other women in Huntsville who are very male identified. They kind of infantilize themselves when they're in the presence of men. Melody doesn't do this. Miss Nell doesn't do this. And uh, Destiny doesn't do it either. She's, she has a very dominant alpha energy that I like about her. Even though she is in a position where she needs help from people, she doesn't carry herself that way. She carries herself as if she knows who she is and she is comfortable in her own skin. And so I like the way she handled the situation. I would have carried myself the same way. Um, Destiny didn't raise her voice. She didn't curse. And, you know, I don't believe in letting the ops see you sweat in any way. And Destiny came to Sunny from a position of strength, confidence, and not anger. She didn't seem to be angry. She knew how to manage her feelings really well in the situation. I think you know, she showed up as a grown woman, which is something that we do not see enough on these reality shows. So that, so I stand by my point that I made a couple weeks ago. People were upset saying that Destiny was the ops and so on and so forth. But I like her for the show because her energy is very different from Kimmy and from Tisha and the other pick me women on the show. Melody, Destiny and Kimmy have similar energy. It even Stormy to an extent. Um, but Stormy is like married to like an alpha male so she can sit back and be a little bit more in her femininity but Destiny for sure since I've seen her on the show has no problem checking a man or anybody for that matter and I think that she balances the cast out pretty well because of her personality finally Martel he decided not to model at Destiny's event because he said that he has a dad bod which means he's out of shape Martel has been showing off his muscles on this show since season one episode one you can see his muscles through his shirts, through his suits. That's how tight his clothes usually are. I'm glad Destiny clocked the fact that Martel has stage fright and that may be the reason why he turned down the opportunity. And this is something I noticed in season one. And to be honest, we saw this uh, stage fright in season three when Martel had that ferret on his shoulder at his wine launch event and he was so nervous he forgot to give his uncle thanks and show gratitude to his family. He just lost his train of thought. That is a sign of someone with a lot of anxiety. And so I do feel bad for him in that regard. He has to deal with that as opposed to uh, projecting that insecurity onto Melody. As a matter of fact, Melody is a very charming, charismatic, and natural public speaker. So he should have been learning from her instead of being jealous and hating on the sidelines. Social anxiety is a really difficult thing to deal with, especially when you're a public figure. And Martel has gone through trauma um, in his life that has significantly affected his self-esteem and he needs to get help for that instead of listening to his ignorant mother downplay and dismiss his childhood experiences that have contributed to his insecurity about public speaking. Now, Destiny and Stormy met at a lounge to discuss the event and I told y'all at some point they will be cool because their personalities are similar. The Melometers are going to isolate Melody from the cast because they're still rehashing the divorce drama and making up new drama to bring attention to themselves for whatever reasons and she's going to have to see this for what it is my motto has always been the more friends you have the more enemies you have and it's the messed up way to think but i have Chiron in my 11th house so i have been betrayed many times by so-called friends to the point where i can identify and distinguish a fake friend from a real one pretty well and that is what's happening with this show melody has a lot of People who are riding her coattails, um, pretending to be her friend, but they're actually causing more problems for her. Now, again, I'm not speaking about any content creator or fan in particular. I don't watch other content creators anymore when it comes to the show, but I've been feeling this way for quite a while while the cast members are now confirming what I suspected over a year ago about the stance. And if the stands don't stop, they're going to sabotage their own bag because nobody's going to want to collaborate with them anymore. Nobody's going to trust them anymore. They're going to um, sabotage their own opportunities for whatever they're looking for. And so, yeah. And, you know, I'm sure some people are going to be triggered by what I have said about the Melometers. And that's not my intention. It is not my intention to hurt anybody's feelings or make anybody feel bad for whatever they choose to do. However... Because I don't want anybody getting hurt and I don't want anybody, you know, losing out on opportunities. I'm giving you guys a heads up and a word of caution based on what I'm observing and what I predicted over two years ago about this show. 
So it's not hate, it's not shade. I don't need to do all of that. As you guys know, I've always been intentional about using my platform to uplift and elevate instead of destroy. And I was willing to sacrifice popularity to do that. Okay, I did not want to become popular because of negativity and bullying. That is an unsustainable lifestyle for me. I cannot get on here on a daily basis and spew negativity, um, especially if my commentary is not educational, right? Um, if it's not informative and educational, then it becomes useless. It just becomes petty banter that only serves the algorithm and the bloodlust of individuals who have a hatred for people on the show. I didn't want to do that. Um, you know, the universe was warning me every time I would post my commentary about the show, the universe would warn me to be very careful with what I said and how I said it. And at the time I was confused because I really, really tried to be as objective, unbiased, rational, and informative as possible. But I really underestimated uh, the fact that some people could take what you put out with good intentions and use it for their negative intentions. That really messed me up. Um, and I really had to pull back from the channel because I felt like at some point my commentary was adding to the negativity. I've said it more than once. And even if I had no intention of doing it, it would people would use what I'm saying to inform their own perspective and their own thought processes and then use some of my talking points to formulate their own opinions. It's like taking a sword that I had crafted carefully um, to cut very evenly and to cut out cancer and diseases and other things in nature and then turning that sword into a bat to just bludgeon everything with it. That's not what I wanted to use my voice for. And so, yeah, um, you know, I'm going to leave it there. I look forward to reading your feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will speak to you soon.